I worked for Stan Peskett, who's that guy. Mm -hmm. he, he was an artist in New York, and he, um, I can't remember where I met him, but I asked him, can I be your apprentice? And he was very nice, he's a really nice person. He said, of course. So I got, he gave me a room in his loft in exchange for being a, an assistant. He was really into graffiti. The subways were covered, the outside of the trains were covered, and he loved graffiti. So he met this gang of graffiti artists, Fred, Fab Five, because there were five graffiti artists, and they came to Stan's loft and they painted these murals inside, and they, what it was going to be for the New York Times. And then the New York Times decided it was too controversial to show graffiti, it was at that time. And everyone was so disappointed that Stan said, I'm going to have a big party, and we're going to have all the art world come and meet the graffiti artists, and it's going to be this big thing. This party happened, and during the party, Jean-Michel graffitied this big thing on the wall. And no we one can knew. see that in the video. Yeah, no one there. knew yeah. who he was, right? When I saw him doing that, I ran over. I was like, oh my god. I, I can't believe I wanted to meet you. And yeah. he said, you did? And I said, yes. And he said, why are you here? He said, I live here. You do? You do? And so I said, come into my room. And in my room, I had like this whole series of baseball cards that I had painted the faces off of, like there's one, the jerk. I was using like white out and just painting their faces out and he wrote the names on it and we started laughing and he said let's make postcards together and I had no idea what he was talking about. And these are the originals that we would make a, a plaque and then divide it into four places and then have it copied and then we'd take the copies, put it on cardboard again and glue it and then cut them up. That's what we did, and we made like, I don't know, maybe 10 or more of each one. Mm -hmm. And we put them on a big piece of ragged cardboard and would walk down the street in New York saying, postcards, postcards. And we were we laughed about like how we did it. We were trying to be like bar carnival barkers. Right, like salesmen. Yeah, it was like a dollar, one dollar for a postcard. And the people that bought them were really humorous people, mm -hmm. like people that got it. Then in New York it was so ridiculous and it was kind of like a street we were showing off on the street and once in a while someone would come and laugh and say okay give me one of those and one of those. <laughs> and so we would take our earnings which went from like five dollars a day to 20 was our best day. And then um, we'd go eat, you know, comidas criollas which is like Cuban Chinese food, really cheap in New York. This happened, you know, that there was a car crash. Right. And we were trying to make a map of where it happened. And it, <laughs> I remember it was like Arapa was grape. It was grape from the Pez, we, you know. Yeah. That, yeah, so you started cutting up these Pez um, sweet Yes, peppers. because yeah. I had a whole Pez collection in my room. <laughs> and he was love Pez because we were little. I mean, we were still teenagers. Yeah. You have to understand the context. There was no digital anything. There was no communication except the communication that you made with each other. And in order to find someone who was on your same wavelength, it was a hunt. You know, not like now. Now you can like, go on the internet and get a friend in a second. But in those days, it, a friend was like, especially if you were a weird kid that grew up in New York, and did not behave the way you were supposed to. We were just outrageous. 